Welcome to this week's episode of Inside Oriel in association with our main club sponsors, Bert Regal. We're building up to Friday's massive, massive game against Shamrock Rovers at Oriel Park. Coming up later on, we'll hear from Robbie Benson, but I'm delighted to say that this week on the sofa, I'm joined by Johannes Ulikuku. Is yep. that the right pronunciation? Yeah, it's close enough. I'm sure you've heard some funny pronunciations of your name. Yeah, the from, the, from the speakers, they yeah, also... The commentators. <laughs> yeah. So what's the proper way to say Johannes Uli Koko. Uli Koko. There you yeah. go. From, from the man himself, Uli Koko. Um, it's International Week. We're obviously building up to the, the game on Friday, but the League of Ireland's been on a break for a couple of weeks due to the internationals and the Euro qualifiers. Hence my jumper. Germany jumper, what do you think? You like? Yeah, that's really nice jumper. <laughs> you like? Bit um, of old school. Yeah? Bit of old school, yeah. Retro, yeah. Retro, Johannes. Um, first of all, did you watch the Ireland game last night? I watched a bit of it, put it on when I was cooking at okay. home, yeah. Did you do all, what what did you did you see any of the performance? No, not really, but it's a tight game. They tight game. they put up with France really good, I heard from the boys. Did you see the save? The goalkeeper save? I actually game? didn't, but I just no. hear people talking about it all the time. No real interest in what, what Ireland was gonna do. <laughs> what about Finland? Um obviously beaten three one by Denmark in the opening game in Copenhagen last week. What's the rivalry like between the Nordic countries? Uh, I would say maybe Sweden. Sweden, Sweden is the main rival there. Yeah, Denmark are a bit, a bit higher up there. A bit far away. Yeah. So, um, disappointing start. Is that a? Yeah, the, we were one-one, so there was something to get out of the game. But in the end, they were just with the quality they have, they were able to come on top. No, yeah. Recovered on Sunday with a win in Belfast. Yeah, that's really Ireland. important. Yeah, did you watch that game? I didn't actually get the chance to watch, but I was thinking about going up there. But uh, with the train, it's uh, it would have been a little bit late to come back. So yeah, good win. Yeah, it's really important to win. The one of the rivals probably in the group too. Yeah, looking go at the, up and looking at the group, Denmark obviously Northern Ireland, Slovenia, who I think are top of the group, Kazakhstan and San Marino, Kazakhstan. And Sure, they're over the moon after a, yeah. a three-two win over Denmark. That was a shock. Yeah, that wasn't good for us either. So yeah, have to play good in the upcoming games. I think there's five teams now and three or four yeah. teams and three points. Slovenia top is that right? Yeah, it's tight. What's the hopes uh, in Finland, Johannes, for for the national team now? When you start a start to qualify, is that the hope now to qualify after? Obviously, you qualified for Euro twenty twenty. Is that the hope or the expectation now? Yeah, obviously the last Euros was the first first uh, championship we got to first time, and now it's a little bit of a buzz around the around the whole country to always get up there now. Yeah, the format's a little bit changed also, so it might be might be good for us. And yeah, it's the uh, opportunity to go up again. When Ireland first qualified for the World Cup in nineteen ninety, the country went crazy. Everybody yeah. still talks about it. What was it like in Finland when the Euros came around last last summer? Yeah, it was probably the same then. You guys here as well. Just whole summer, people talking about it and going up on the street and in the bars and obviously watching all the games in some some type of way, going over or in the in the city center. They put up all these like fan zones, big fan zones. Yeah, to watch the games and it was real bus. Where did you Where did you watch the games? Uh, some of the games I just watched with my friends at their homes, so or then a couple of games we we went out to the city to feel the atmosphere yeah, and yeah. Uh, buzz around it, and yeah, it was a real nice experience yeah. for for the whole country. You obviously beat Denmark as well, which I'm sure was, uh, I'm sure was ma- massive celebrations for that. Yeah, you know the game actually was the one where Eriksen got mm. got a little bit a little bit. Uh, Tough situation, so it was a bit of a weird atmosphere. Huh? Yeah, weird because we got the like first win and we were happy about it, but then you couldn't really celebrate it. No, much. yeah, yeah. You've seen the players also when uh, Pohjan Pala scored the like goal. He was first like, yeah, but then he was like, yeah, can't really celebrate it. Where did you watch that game? Uh, I was actually at one of my friends' house watching it. Yeah. Can you remember? I think everybody remembers what they were doing when. The incident happened with Ericsson. Yeah, we were like, first it was obviously a like real nice experience. We go up and then, then that happens. So we were just kind of everybody in shock and mm. 
just don't know how to react to that kind of situation. Yeah, thankfully, thankfully he's healthy and he's. Yeah, I'm a United fan, so I'm hoping that he's back in the pitch soon as well. He's a yeah, it's he's amazing a, how he recovered. Unbelievable, brilliant player. Speaking of Finland, who'd be the greatest player ever from Finland? From Finland, for sure, Yari Litman. Yari Litman, and I watched him yeah. when he was growing up. Probably shows you my age. Yeah, when he's part of the Ajax team. Yeah, player. Ajax, Barcelona, mm-hmm. Liverpool. Yeah, really good player. Sammy Hoppy, would he be in there? A lot of people, Liverpool fans yeah, here? Yeah, probably he'd be up there. There's a lot of Liverpool fans in Finland probably because of him, like just being on top of yeah. his game. Looking at the current squad, who'd be the Pookie would probably be the most the most well-known, would he? Yeah, I would say so. Most accolades and scored goals for Finland. And uh, yeah, I still think he's the like main man. Yeah. Looking at the looking at the the squad last week, was it three HJK players in a three of your? Yeah, I think so. There? And one uh, one of our guys, like twenty year old, got mm. to the field last game, so it was like really nice to see that happen. And know that like if you play good in HJK, you also get chances in the national team. So brings the hopes up. What's it like over there? Because there used to be a perception here in Ireland that. You'd have to leave Ireland to go and play in England or in Europe to get into the to the national squad. I'm just looking at the the Finnish squad here, like a lot of players in Poland, some into Miami, Minnesota, Germany, Sweden. Is is that the is 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 that normally the way what happens in Finland? Yeah, that's like still a little bit that maybe you if you get a good move yeah. overseas and you play well there, it's probably easier to get to the squad than from the Finnish league. But now in the past years there's like been more players coming in also from the Finnish league. I think it's to do with the like Finnish leagues maybe a reputation or like the skill levels have gone up in the years and now it's easier to get from also SJK. There's a couple from Coops also in the have been in the squad, so it's good that you also get to the squad from the Finnish league. Yeah, I suppose the big thing that probably helps there is HJK getting the group stages of yeah. European football. Yeah, that probably helps as well. Yeah, yeah. 21 years of age, the job is going to be a footballer? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah? Started three years old. Three years old? Yeah, with my big brother going in and... He was one year older than me, so I just started at the same time. I was reading you have three, three brothers. Yeah, one older brother and two younger brothers. One older and two younger. Do they play as well? Yeah, everybody in our family has played. Are they playing, any, are they playing in, with any clubs or is it just local clubs? Just local clubs and only my youngest brother still is playing. The other ones have They're too gone, retired. gone into other ventures of life. <laughs> Sorry, they hung up the boots, as I say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was reading your dad was your coach. When you're a teenager, did that was that a help or was that a can it be tough when your dad's the coach? No, I think it was good. Like he coached from the when we started. Yeah. He was also there and then obviously as we got older there were like he was just the team manager and yeah. like when we were twelve, twelve to fourteen about. So he's coached all of our boys. Right, very good. Very good. You're saying he was over at the Bohemians game, your first game, where you scored. Yeah, yeah, that was really nice that he was in the stands for the, yeah. my debut and also getting the getting the yeah. goal. What way does it work there, Johannes? So you moved to was it FC Cassis? Is that the, the am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> FC Cassis. FC Cassis. Right, I'll leave that with you. So what's that? Your local club, is it? That's the local club that I, mean, I was do, in. Where do you It's like there? a junior club. Right. Okay. And then uh, after that, you go to. Like FC Espo okay. is the like uh, city that I'm from. It's a like a little bit bigger club, but they don't have like any. Uh, the first team is in the second or third division at the right, moment. Okay. But yeah, then after that, I got to move to HJK, like the junior side, because I was still playing at the one years older. Right. Okay. Uh, with one years older uh, boys, so I think that was the right time to go play with like my own age group. So I went to HJK. And is a is HJK's reserve team Cl- Kluby? Is it? Yeah, Kluby O four. Kluby O four. I leave the the team names to you, but that's the that's HHK's that's like a reserve, reserve team. team. Yeah. They play in what the first division, is it? Uh, yeah, we call it like second division, but right, it's okay. 
Oh yeah. A couple of years there, I'm sure that was a that's playing against men, is it? Yeah, that's yeah. like the first time right. uh, when you're junior in SJK. If you go to Club O4, then you're like playing against men, and that's the first experience you get with playing against men, and that's how they try to build it up. So you might get a step to the first team. How did you find that playing against playing against men and for the for the first time? Well, you, when you're a B junior, it's uh, I was a little bit like on the smaller side, yeah. not really developed at the moment. So uh, when I, I was two years in the like B juniors, some players uh, are only one year and then they already go to go to the reserve team if they're like, you know, more developed or something. But I was two years there and then I think I was ready for that. And I didn't really feel that different because the level like in the second division is not that high the tempo everything so it's a good transition for the young players yeah you made your debut for the first team in april 2022 is that that's just not even yeah in the league we has have this, months ago we uh, we have like a league cup that it's being played during the preseason and that's where i also played but yeah that's the like official debut yeah the, the your goal against VPS I think that was the one we showed when you signed it was a it was a good strike yeah got on my left peg and just yeah. let it fly your left peg you've got all the you've got all the the little terms as well the, the left <laughs> yeah peg. I, I get a hold of them when people are just talking about something what was the one I think um, we were talking about when you played against Batiste wasn't in the the Europa League you said the putch is in the blender <laughs> <laughs> is that one of the words as well it's something you'd hear blender yeah. yeah it's something you'd hear it's something you'd hear yeah 27 appearances last season with HJK's first team you, you won obviously won the league what was the thinking then of going on, on loan this year yeah just like uh, it was the information from the club side mm -hmm. that maybe it's better to explore uh, other options to get like more play time mm -hmm. I could have just, uh, stayed there and fight for the playtime there, but I was thinking that uh, like this year I want to improve a lot mm. and try to get as much uh, playing time as possible, which makes it easier to improve. So that's the thought process again mm. uh, behind that. Yeah. What 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 comes into your head when you hear first of all Ireland and Dock? Are you thinking? Where is it? What what standard is it? Did you did you know about the club from Europe, or did you have to do a bit of research before you came? Yeah, it was obviously a, a little shock because first I was just uh, looking at options, you know, in Finland, mm. other Vegas Liga teams, and then uh, heard about there's a possibility to go loan to Ireland mm. and Dog. So yeah, I really didn't know anything about the club at that point, but or the league to say but then I just did some research and my agent does know something about the league so he was able to tell me something and yeah big decision I'm sure because you're living at home I think which are, which yeah. you're living in the SP is only it's close it's outside yeah just it's a lucky. 20 minute drive to the stadium so I was still living at my parents so not only are you moving away from your parents you're moving to a different different country yeah obviously it's a big change big change but I think I've already like gotten used to it pretty good and everything is flowing at the moment so no problems. What were you thinking getting on the plane to Ireland for the first time? Just uh, excited and yeah. obviously a little bit nervous about the new environment how it is going to be how the people are going to be but as soon as I got here the welcoming was like so warm and really good and just got a a really good start you like it you seem to like it here yeah i yeah. think the people are like really nice and uh actually so helpful which is like helped me a lot the teammates obviously really helpful and good group of lads and the coaching staff and everybody you thanks really, Alice. thank you very much really nice people so yeah it's easy to come here i would say so what do you what do you make of town like because i was looking at three hundred thousand people in espo dream there are only 30, 35,000 people in yeah. the dock, so it's a, um, is it, do you find it a lot smaller, or how do you find it? Well, I, I drive a bike, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Look out for I don't, Johannes on the bike around town, folks. I don't find it so small, because yeah. it's uh, a little bit of a way to go with the bike, but yeah. I think it's nice that it's like quite small and compact. Yeah. I have an apartment in the centre, so 
it's just easy to go everywhere with the bike and uh, I've found it really nice. Where do you like? Where have you where have you gone? Coffees, restaurants, anybody? Yeah, coffees with the boys, third place, third just place, in the yeah. middle of the town. Really good sandwiches there, and also when my dad to McHugh's restaurant, it was really nice food, and yeah, just uh, it's easy to like when you live on your own. You obviously have to go to the grocery stores, and yeah. they're really close by there, so you can just choose whichever you would like to go to, and. Now you're banging, you're banging the center. You couldn't get any more center. <laughs> yeah. Then you were saying, you were saying to me last week, you down to the lads down in Belfry, watch a bit of football and sort of hang out with them. Yeah, obviously in the start, I was uh, living at the house with the boys, and then came the opportunity to go live on my own. And uh, after that, I've been just cycling about the boys and watch a bit of TV series yeah. or watch a bit of football. And yeah, I think it's really nice. How's the accent? You said you can understand me okay. Yeah, you you and uh, some of the other Irish uh, accents are fine for me, I think. But it's the Scottish accent that gets me. We're not going to mention who it is, but everybody <laughs> can guess. Mr. Elliot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny accent. But when you, if you're in town and you're in the shops, can you, you understand everything yeah, okay? Yeah, I think I understand. Because we have, we have a very unique accent in Dundalk. Yeah, I think I understand it pretty well and haven't had that many problems. That's good. That's good. I was reading as well. You like a bit of a bit of golf. Yeah. Have you gone? Have you gone anywhere? To not yet, not yet. Yeah. No. Plenty I of think, golf clubs in the area. Yeah, the boys are also. Some of them are golfers. So whenever they mm. they are going, then I might jump in with them. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's lots of them in the area. St. Patrick's Day. You went to the parade in Dublin. How was that? How was your? What was your first experience? I've never been to the St. Patrick's Day parade. In Dublin, yeah. So you you've 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 already got one more than me. What was it? What was it like? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> I just jump out the jump out the train in the station, and everybody's just wearing those big hats and green and uh, orange, and uh, all the face paintings. Yeah. And yeah, people were just looking really happy. And then I just walked to the river and tried to find the parade, and yeah. I just see a ton of people and yeah, it was kind of crazy but like a nice bus around the town at the moment and it was a nice experience country just goes mad yeah mad i got a good good spot to also like see the parade stuff yeah just got a little bit high off the ground and saw it and yeah it was nice it was an experience yeah experience okay well um thankfully it was a good sympathy this weekend we obviously won in draw the night before the yeah. the derby which was a, a good way to start the celebrations that weekend yeah that's true it's a bit of a tough game in the small pitch and hope uh, luckily we got the three points from there that's important but yeah. we're looking to try to improve our own game also yeah we'll speak more about the derby um, and obviously this Friday's game against Rovers when we come back in part two um, before we go to a break um, Robbie Benson come back and played 75 minutes in the Leinster Senior Cup defeat against Shelburne on Friday night um, it's fair to say that Robbie loves a goal against Shamrock Rovers do you know how many goals Robbie Benson scored against Shamrock Rovers? I've actually just I've been, to, the I've been to Twitter You've there seen. before this meeting and I've seen 8 goals he's 8 scored. goals for Dundalk he's, he's got 12 overall he's 4 for UCD and 8 for Dundalk against Shamrock Rovers nice. so it'd be nice if Robbie could add another one on Friday um, I sat down with Bob on Tuesday as Johanna said, to go through his eight previous goals against Rovers, and we played that interview now. You're back just in time for Shamrock Rovers, a, a club you've a great record against. And it was looking through you've 12 goals against Rovers in your career, eight of them for Dundalk. No one knew, I'm sure you remember all the goals you've scored against, against Rovers. You remember your first one for Dundalk? The first one for Dundalk against them was. First game of the season, 2017. Mm -hmm. 32 minutes in, Dundalk take the lead. And it's Robbie Benson. Delight for the home support. Great work by Duffy. Eventually got it across the area. And there was Benson to poke it home to give Dundalk the lead. 2017 Dundalk Cup semi. Yeah. Here. Sean Gannon slides it down. And Stephen O'Donnell inside the area. Teeing it up for Duffy who allows it to run. And Benson is there. It's a goal for Dundalk. Robbie Benson. Cup semi-replay. The replay up in Tala. 
Um, Made famous by Stevie's header and yeah. celebration on the touchline. That was a good one. Want a kick from Duffy then. Oh, the goalkeeper's lost it, and there's Benson. Well, he scored in the first match, and now he scored again. And 53 minutes in, the dog have taken the lead, come from behind. Janczynski didn't get there. Benson certainly did. Header here, 2019. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful goal. Robbie Benson. Managed to get away from Dorian initially, but Benson is on to it. Um, 2018 followed in one keeper spill, Kevin Horgan spilled. Yeah, that's how many? That's right, yeah, go on. And there's, there's two more up in Tallow that season in the 5 2. Oh, 5 2 2, yeah. Um, Christian slipped me in. Christian and Jamie McGrath yeah. providing the assist. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good assist from you there, though. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what was your favourite? I, I, I have a feeling I probably know your favourite. The Cup Semi one was the best. Um, it was. I had the finishing touch. I but the rest of the move was was top quality. It's come up in a few YouTube compilation yeah. videos of, of great goals. So it's a good one. Good one to check out. Right. Taken up for Duffy, who loves it to Rod and Benson is there. It's a goal for Tom Dog. Obviously, the goal here last year was one of the it was one of the highlights of the 2022 season. That that summer's night here when Oriel was full, it was it was a great atmosphere and it, it, it was probably you know it showed the potential of what what that what what this team can do. Yeah, um, we probably struggled after that a little bit with in injuries and stuff too. Then that so there was a little bit of a drop off then from consistency to the end of the season. But even you know talking to each other, we were going up to Derry and. I was saying to Wardy, like if the four lads got food poisoning tonight in midfield, the four replacements that would come on would be, you know, just as mm. good. So we do have good depth, and I think that'll stand us in good stead going forward to as the season goes on and we get into Europe in the summer. Could you see that there on Friday night when you think of the the seven or eight lads that didn't play? It's it's the, the squad's really it's got depth and quality through. Yeah, I say even back. When the Leinster Senior Cup was around first, I think you'd find it hard pressed to find as strong as an 11 as we had out the other night. Mm. So that is good. And as I said the competition is good in training, it keeps you on your toes for sure. How have you found the new lads in midfield? There's a lot of. Uh, I wouldn't fancy trying to, to pick. Stephen is a tough job trying to pick you know, players, now, especially in the mid, midfield department. Connor's come in, Johannes has done really well. Obviously, out wide, you've got Ray. Do you know, what, what, have you, what have you made of the new lads? Yeah, they've all. They've all settled in really well and they're they're gelling well in the group. I think you see Connor and Ray's probably are the two standouts from a, a quality in the final third. But as you said, Johannes, you know, tough for him coming from Finland and you know second language, but he's he's integrated well and you know everyone really has 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 shown that their moments. Archie Hayden was the other night, so. Um, yeah, it is. It's exciting. Yeah. It's an exciting group, and it keeps us on our toes. You're challenged every day in training, and you know you have to be at your top of your game to to get in the team. The lads have been brilliant in midfield, especially probably our strongest area of the pitch this season. So, um, you know, I'll have to, you know, by my time to get back in the team. But you know, I'll be behind the lads all the way. Yeah, Owen Kenny, come on. He's been involved in the first team. That must be weird seeing seeing Stephen Son, who was knocking around here as a supporter when he was a, a young lad, now part of the first team squad. What's that like? Yeah, it's weird, especially <laughs> especially when he's uh, make you feel old. Yeah, and when he's when I would have last seen only he would have been you know up to my up to my chest, and yeah. now he's you know making me making me look small. But he has he's good quality. You you can see it. Uh, he'll he'll get used to the the speed of training and. He's showing good flashes when he does. So mm -hmm. Anto as well, who's been in with us, says you know he's a good work ethic as well. So I think the 19s are doing quite well this mm -hmm. year. So it is it's, it's exciting for the town that they're <coughs> excuse me that they're bringing bringing younger lads through like that as well. Yeah. It's the one fixture, isn't it? We all look forward at the the Dock Rovers. It's the one everybody sort of looks out for at the when the fixtures come out each year. Yeah, it's always probably the one that you'd you'd share when when's the first time we play mm -hmm. Rovers, especially since. They've been so good the last few years. Um, it's a real glamour time, sure. The, the place we packed here, and you know, it's, it's a good, it's a good atmosphere and good buzz. Probably more than more than any game we play yeah. really in the year. The the crowd is really behind us, and, and, and we feed off that. Yeah, a win would put us nine points clear. Them is that you look into that too early this too early in the season? Be looking at stuff like that. No, it's like back in 2019. I think they were even further ahead of us, and we we, yeah, so yeah. we reeled them in, but. It, it's going to be probably a low points total this year, I'd say. Even you know, if a team goes on any sort of a run, it, it could pull them away. And especially today's age, social media 
people are quick to crown teams very early and you know Derry were the Derry have been brilliant this year and they've you know drawn their last two so it is uh, you, you could come in on a Friday and see see any result in the league and not be too surprised yeah. that, that the result has happened so we just have to make sure we're coming on, out on the right side of the results yeah hopefully another Benson goal for the compilation yeah please God that'd be nice thanks Robbie thanks for joining me thank you Okay, welcome back to part two of this week's Inside Oriel in association with Bet Regal. Um, I'm joined by Johannes Ulikuku. Yeah. Getting there. That's that's better already. Getting there. Getting there. Um, say we're building up to Friday's massive game against Shamrock Rovers at Oriel Park. But um, before we get into that, Johannes has got a framed and signed jersey here that you can show it up. Yeah, it's just shown in front of the camera. Um, supporter Dem at Hanratty has kindly donated this Beautiful framed and signed jersey with O'Donnell six on the back. Um, it if you remember last year we ran a campaign for motor neuron disease in association with Bert Regal to raise funds for Watch Your Back M and D. Damage um, was the winner of the auction for Stephen O'Donnell's jersey, and he's kindly offered it to us um, to raise funds for the Harry Taff Mental Health and Wellbeing Program. As of today, it's Tuesday afternoon. The highest bid is €500. Euro. So the auction continues until next Monday night. So you can see the details of that on our social media pages. But again, money's going to a good cause. So if you have a couple of euro lying around and you would love this unique jersey, um, the details of the auction are on our social media account. You can put it down now, Johannes. That was tougher than the gym session today, yeah, was it? Yeah. Holding that up, just stick it over there. Um, just a couple of other things. Our online shop is now open. Um, you can get all the latest 2023 playoff fit range. Any of your family or friends looking for some merchandise, you can get it online now. Uh, maybe when they get over here, maybe they might buy. Buy some of it. Um, tickets for Friday night are available from the office. Um, there'll be no sales online for this game. And we advise you to buy uh, your tickets early and be great if you could bring a couple extra people up and we have a full house in Oriel on Friday night. You've played two home games here at Oriel, you've won both of them. Yeah. The Friday game against Pats and then the Monday night Monday night games are difficult, but the atmosphere against Pats was good. Have the lads been telling you what they expect now against Rovers on, on Friday? Yeah, we've just been talking about in training. It's going to be a probably full house and hopefully a full house and all the fans behind us and... It's going to be a great night. Do, do, any of the, do any of the players actually sit down and say, right, this is what you can expect. The Shamrock Rovers, it's Dundalk versus... Dundalk Rovers is the biggest big, biggest game in the country, big rivalry there. Do the lads actually tell you that or is it just something you can you sort of you can sort of feel it yourself? Yeah, I think I've like got the feeling and also from the gaffer talking about uh, how it's going to be, so... Don't really need the yeah. like further explanations, but maybe they will come and tell how it's gonna be in the upcoming days. Yeah, league champions obviously in the last three years. They're in the Europa Conference League group stages last year. They haven't had a great start of the season. They've they've they haven't won a game yet, but they've only been beaten once. Yeah, five draws. So, what are you expecting from them? Just uh, from the video that mm. they are like really uh, talented team. They're really good on the ball, uh, some uh, good individuals, and uh, we're going to look forward to, to the game and try to try to get the best out of us and try to beat them. Yeah, we've put ourselves in a really good position with the results before, yeah. the, before the internationals. Yeah, it's good. We're now third, like four points from the top, so hope to add it up. Uh, during the Friday game, yeah, we we mentioned the the derby before, just before we we finished part one. How did you find that? Because I remember speaking to you in the week, and you're expecting, you know, a fast, aggressive game. How did you actually? How did you find it now? Yeah, that's exactly how it was. Also, and I think the pitch played it uh, played its part in it. Just like a small pitch and pretty slippery, also. So. It was not the best game out of us as a team, and that probably helped them also to get their energies up. And they were winning a lot of the duels, so we have to be better at that uh, in the future, and also be a little bit more better and composed on the ball. That's how we yeah. we want to play and uh, get our wins. The good thing, the good thing about that game is that 
everybody was delighted to win the derby, obviously, and to win the game. But I think every player was disappointed, and Stephen was disappointed. That shows who it shows what this team really wants to go on and do. It's not just you're not just happy with winning yeah. the game. You want to win it. You want to win it in a in a proper style. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and that's what we were like talking about after the game and during last week that we need to improve, and we have a lot. A lot of like room to improve, so to say. And when we when we get to the stage that we want to get, then we will be like a really tough team to beat. Yeah. What have you made of it now? And since you've been here, you've been here a while now. What have you made of the league in general? What do you think of it? Yeah, I think like it's just uh, really uh, high tempo and um. It's just a little bit, I would say, harder to play here. You can say what you say what you want, you know, going. You're, not <laughs> yeah. gonna, you're not gonna offend anybody. It's it's a tough league, isn't it? It is, yeah, really tough. And uh, I would say it's much harder to play here. So it's uh, like a good stepping stone for me to also show myself mm. in a, a pretty much a different environment and also improve uh, on those aspects of my game. So not just be like good on the ball, but also the other side have to be better. I think it's surprising for people who come from outside of Ireland when they actually start playing the games, the intensity and yeah. it never it never really it never drops. Yeah, that's really good for me also mm. personally and just trying to get used to it. And I think I've already uh, gotten used to it a bit. And... Yeah. You've played in a couple of positions as well, I think. We're all expecting you to be number 10 or a winger, but you've actually played six you've, you've played eight you've been you, is that something you're you're comfortable doing yeah yeah i would say so also back in back home in sjk i've been playing a lot of positions mm. just where the coach wants me to play i can i can do a lot of positions and just try to improve on all those uh all those aspects of game how would you compare it to the league back home F- facilities and stadium wise is is there is I'm sure some of the stadiums here would be like some of the some of the stadiums in in Finland and some of them wouldn't be fantastic. Uh yeah, there's like a couple of stadiums back home which are really nice. Obviously, haven't been to a Shamrock Rovers stadium. Probably, yeah. stadium. That's probably the best here, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's a couple of uh, stadiums like that, and then obviously some of the teams uh, which don't have as mm. uh, good financial. Um, positions they, their stadiums are like similar to some of the stadiums here like a little bit on the on the older side and actually there's a couple of uh, teams back back home which are have like stadium projects going on at the moment so they're trying to like build new newer stadiums I think there's also here a couple of there's a couple of them yeah, in, in the pipeline yeah is, is football the biggest sport in Finland or are you competing with other? Yeah, competing, but football in the junior side is still like the there's most uh, children playing football. But okay. I would say ice hockey is like the number one sport in Finland still. Really? Yeah. Yeah, from the uh, spectator and viewership uh, point of view, it's still like the biggest sport, and also there's more money in ice hockey at the moment. Right. Okay. Okay. The league back in Finland starts what this the next weekend is it the sixth yeah sixth of sixth of April is the first games. What's the hopes for HJK this year to retain the the league title? Yeah, it's every year it's the same that we have to win the league and also um, now we're in the league cup final, but that's not as prestigious as okay. the Finnish cup, and then we want to win that as well and. Uh, get to group stages like we here in Dundalk. Is the, is the expectation now, because you've got to the group stages last year, is, is the expectation with, with supporters there to to sort of go to the groups every year or is that is it still a very tough proposition for clubs in yeah. Finland as it is for, for clubs here? Yeah, I would say it's still like people know it's tough, but uh, HJK fans probably are expecting mm. uh, to get to the groups and probably not that we get to Europa League groups every year because that was like really good, uh, really good um, how we got there. But like uh, at least the the conference league groups that's like the hopes for the fans that we get there every year now for countries like 
Ireland and Finland. I think it's been a it's been a really good addition to the Conference League. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. You get like more money from there and try to compete with the bigger clubs that way. And it has helped us also back in Finland. What was your experience last year in the, the Europa League? I'm sure that was in your first first full season with the with the senior team to play in the Europa League. So that was nice. Yeah, it was amazing. Like just what you hope to be, uh, get to as a kid playing just yeah. Europa League, Champions League, and it was kind of a dream come true also. And just seeing all the venues and players that we played against, it was a really nice experience. Yeah, yeah, be nice to do it again in the summer. Right, so. A win on Friday night to put us nine points clear. Rovers, Robbie Benson said yesterday that's you don't look at you don't look at that early on in the season, but nine points is a big it's a big gap, isn't it? Yeah, it would be a good thing to get the, the win and also not get them like any um how do you say it? Get them in the groove, mm-hmm. so to say. So just keep doing what we do and be on top of the table. Yeah. You said you're your reason for coming here was to, to play games. Just looking at the the calendar, we've got eleven games coming up in April and May. It's a it's a really really busy busy period. But I'm sure that's that's what all the players that's that's what you want to do as a player. You'd rather play it and train. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's good that you have these games, and we have a like good big squad, mm-hmm. so we can rotate players uh, and keep everybody fresh for the games. And uh, we also have had this uh, back home last season because we need to get the games before the Europa League. Uh, oh, not the Europa League, but uh, like qualifiers. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple of like two two game weeks also yeah. also back home. So nothing new, so to say. And three Friday nights now with home games. The home record last year was, uh, yeah. was brilliant. If we can if we can start off this Friday with a win. Just carry the momentum, hopefully, into the next couple of games after that. Yeah, hopefully. It's Sligo next game, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, looking forward to those. Yeah. You score a winner against... I said to Conor Mali that you score a winner in the Derby or a hero. You score a winner against Rovers. Yeah, it's the, hero. it's the same thing. You need a bigger thing. hero. So you would <laughs> All right. talk about you forever. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice to do that on, on Friday night. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to the game and just... Maybe score, help the nice. team win. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. A chill would be nice. Thanks, Johannes. Thanks for thanks for joining me. Really yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Nice chat. Um, we'll see you all at Oriel on Friday night. As the tickets are available now from the office, there will be no tickets online. We'd advise you to get up, get your tickets early, and get up and get behind the lads and make it one of those special Friday nights. Um, Thanks again to Bet Regal for their sponsorship of the club and for sponsoring the show. And we'll be back again next week. Thank you.